Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. Before starting the video, I would like to thank all the support in the previous two videos. All the likes and the views are greatly appreciated. Now let's get to the video. In this video, we are going to discuss the problem of object tracking and we are going to discuss an algorithm to solve that problem called the deep sort algorithm. So let's have a look at the data that we are going to work with and understand what is object tracking. So let's do that. For this particular project, we are going to use several videos that were recorded by a camera that was placed in front of an autonomous car. So let's have a look at one of the videos. In this video, we can see that there are two cars that are moving. And this is another video of the same highway scenario. So a data set has six videos that contain this highway scenario. For object tracking, we need to keep track of both of these cars that are moving in front of us. If we assign an ID to both of these cars, if we say this is the black car and this is the white car, then in each frame of the video, we need to keep detecting where is the black car and where is the white car. This has to be done for the complete duration of the video. In object tracking, we are not only required to detect where the car is present in this particular frame, but we also need to remember that this is the car that has been assigned the ID black car. And this is the car that has been assigned the ID white car. The link to this data set would be present in the description box below. Okay, so now we have defined the object detection problem and had a look at the data set. So now let us understand how this deep sort algorithm works. As you may have seen before, in object tracking, not only do we need to detect the objects, but also track where they are going. So if we consider this collection of images, or we can say a video, we can see that we have two objects that are moving in this video. It is this round object that is going in the horizontal direction and one object that is going in the vertical direction. In object tracking, we are not only detecting where are the objects present in this image, but we are also tracking where the objects I did one and two are going. So this is the whole problem of object tracking. In our case, it would be traffic tracking. We need to keep a track of the different cars that are moving around our autonomous vehicle. So the algorithm that we're going to use to solve this object tracking problem is called the deep sort algorithm. Before discussing the deep sort algorithm, we would first start our discussion with the simple sort algorithm. Sort stands for simple online real time tracking. And the simple sort algorithm uses bounding box prediction, Kalman filters and IOU matching techniques. First, let us start with bounding box predictions. The first step in this algorithm is to generate bounding boxes or detect where are the objects present in the image. Now this can be accomplished using any CNN architecture. It can be YOLO, it can be RCNN or it can even be a simple computer vision handcrafted model. For our project, we have used the YOLO v3 algorithm. The YOLO v3 algorithm is already explained in my another video. The link to that would be in the I button above and in the description box below. However, briefly what your low v3 algorithm does, given an input image, it is going to detect all the objects that are present in that image, draw a bounding box around them and also tell us what that object is. After we have generated the bounding box predictions, we get to the next step, which is the Kalman filter. Now Kalman filter is a very broad topic, which would take an entire video to explain, but still we would be left with a lot of ground to cover. So to briefly discuss Kalman filter, we can say in very simple terms that Kalman filter is a linear approximation. So what is the role of Kalman filter over here? Kalman filter needs to predict what is going to be the future location of a given detected object. Using these future predictions, we can determine whether the object that we were tracking is it the same object or not. Along with that, using prediction, we can also deal with the problem of occlusion. So what is occlusion? In this example above, we can see between these, these two frames, 
the two balls are going to overlap each other and whichever object is in front is going to occlude the object that is present behind it. In order to deal with this problem in object tracking, predictions are useful. So how does Kalman filter works? Kalman filter assumes a linear velocity model and generates the predictions according to it. Once we get the real data where the object is, we input that again to the Kalman filter. The Kalman filter improves its predictions based on the real data that it got and again generates a new set of predictions. In this way, Kalman filter works in an iterative manner and keeps improving its predictions. As an output, the Kalman filter does not output a single number. Actually, it outputs a probability distribution of where the object can be in a given set of locations. If we take the maximum value of that probability, we can in some way approximate where the object is going to be. This is the work of the Kalman filter. It generates future predictions for the objects. The next step we have is called IOU matching. IOU stands for intersection over union. This concept is also discussed in my YOLO object detection video. In brief terms, we can say IOU gives us a quantitative score to determine how much two bounding boxes are similar to each other based on their location in the image as well as the size. What is this IOU matching in the context of sort algorithm? Let us consider this case. We have n different cars that we are detecting in a particular frame and we have n IDs that we need to assign to these particular cars. Like in this case, IDs are useful to determine which object we are tracking. So we need to assign these n detections to these n IDs. For each of the n IDs, we have IOU score corresponding to each detection. In a descriptive way, we have the detected objects in the row and we have the IDs in the columns. So for each of the ith ID, and the jth detection, we have an IOU score. Now we want to assign the IOU scores to these n detections in such a way that the total IOU score is maximized. Solving this problem using brute force approach takes order complexity n factorial, which is very large. In order to solve this, the sort algorithm uses the Hungarian algorithm. The Hungarian algorithm solves this linear assignment problem in order complexity n cubed which is a great improvement over the n factorial algorithm. Once we have assigned these n predictions to n IDs, we have in a sense solved the tracking problem for the ith frame. Then we can run this algorithm again in a loop and again keep track of the objects that are in the next frame of the video. So this is how the simple sort algorithm works. Now deep sort is an extension of the simple sort algorithm. Now the deep in the deep sort comes from this step called the deep appearance descriptor step. Along with that, we also have a cascade matching step that is added to the simple sort algorithm. So deep appearance descriptor is a convolutional neural network which is trained to detect a similar object in different images. What this means, this, this network can tell given a number of images of the same person in different views whether it is the same person or not. So as an input, the deep descriptor receives a cropped image of the object detected. And as an output, we try to receive a vector that encodes the information that is present in that cropped image. These encoded vectors would allow us to compare different objects. So now we have two models that are describing us about similar objects in different frames of a video. We combine the score given by these two models in a linear fashion. The score by the deep descriptor is given using the cosine distance metric and the score by the Kalman filter is given by the Malanobis distance. Before discussing how these metrics are computed, let us first discuss the notion of a distance metric. A distance metric is a score that we assign to two different entities A and B to tell how similar they are. For instance, if we consider a 2D plane, on that plane, we have two points A and B. We compute their distance from the origin. If the two entities A and B are close to each other, then their distance from the origin is also going to be similar in value. If the two entities A and B are very dissimilar to each other, 
then these two entities are going to have a Euclidean distance that is very dissimilar. We can say one is going to have a negative value, the other one is going to have a positive value. If they are lying on the two sides of the y-axis. In these two cases, we need to use another notion of distance metric. For the deep descriptors, we use the cosine distance metric. How do we compute this? If we are given two entities A and B, and from the origin, we draw a vector joining these. And then we calculate the angle between these two vectors. The cosine value of this angle is going to give us the cosine distance metric. Let us consider an example. If we have two vectors that are overlapping each other, the angle between them is going to be 0. And the cosine value of 0 is going to be 1. This means that these two vectors are very similar to each other. However, if two vectors are perpendicular to each other, the cosine value of 90 is going to be 0. This would mean that these two vectors are very dissimilar to each other. In this way, we would be able to determine whether the two objects that we detected, how much similar they are to each other. For the Kalman filter case, we are not using the cosine similarity. The reason for this is the Kalman filter is going to output not a single point, but a probability distribution. In order to compare the similarity between a point and a probability distribution, we use Mellanobis distance. If we consider that this is the distribution that is output by the Kalman filter, this implies that the probability of the object being over here is very high compared to the values outwards. And this is the point that we want to compare with this probability distribution. In very simple terms, what Mellanobis distance does, for a 2D version, we compute the two directions in which the data spread is the highest. For this case, we can see the data spread is the highest in this direction and a perpendicular this direction. Then we normalize and transform the coordinate axis in such a way that these two axes become the coordinate axis. In that transformed space, we calculate the distance of this point from the origin. The value of that distance is the Mellanobis distance. Using this metric, we decide how much a given prediction by the Kalman filter matches an object that we just detected. Combining these two, we get an overall scalar score value that we can use to assign the detections to their IDs using the Hungarian algorithm. However, in the implementation, there is a slight catch. The authors of the deep sort algorithm noticed that the predictions by the Kalman filter are not very useful and the score for these predictions can be neglected. However, you would see that in our project, this doesn't work very well. The next step that we have is cascade matching. Cascade matching is an extension to the IOU matching algorithm. For the assignment problem, the cascade matching takes into account the temporal dimension as well. In order to reduce the time complexity for the Hungarian algorithm, cascade matching tries and match the latest detections with the latest IDs and the later or old detections with the old IDs. All of this process combined gives us the deep sort algorithm. And we can again run this algorithm in a loop to track objects in a complete video. Alright, so this is all for the explanation part of the deep sort algorithm. Now let's have a brief look at the code and the results and see how it worked for our project. So let's do this. The link to this code or notebook will be provided in the description box below as well. So these are the different sub parts of the complete deep sort algorithm. The first part is the YOLO v3 network that is used to generate the bounding boxes. The second step is the detections part where we encode the given cropped image. The third part is the Kalman filter where we use the Kalman filter to generate the predictions. The next part is the IOU matching. In this part, we solve the linear assignment problem and the cascade matching that we discussed before. Next up is the nearest neighbor matching. This contains the code for the Euclidean distance as well as the cosine distance. The next part is tracking. This combines all the different modules that we developed before to create a final object that does the complete tracking. 
Finally, we have the object tracking where we run the complete algorithm. This file over here contains the pre-trained network for deep appearance descriptor. We have this function object tracking that takes in the video path input and also takes the output path where to save the output video. Now let's have a look at the results of how the final video looks like. So this is the first video. As we can see this one and two, these are the IDs that are assigned to these two cars respectively. This is the second video. As we can see, the car over here was assigned the ID nine. And even in some frames, the YOLO algorithm was not able to detect that car. Even after those miss detections, the algorithm was able to determine that this was the car labeled ID nine. Till now, we had a look at the videos where the algorithm was performing really well. Now let's have a look at the video where the algorithm didn't perform that well. In this video, we can see that we have this car labeled 12 and we have this new car that is labeled 35. Now you would see what is the problem that this algorithm is facing. Due to the occlusion that was given by this black car, this car is now re-identified as the ID 36 and not the ID 12 that it was assigned before. So this is one problem that deep sort algorithm faced due to a longer occlusion period. The algorithm was not able to detect the correct ID for the car. Even after checking different hyperparameter values, I was not able to get rid of this ID assignment problem. This I believe would be due to assigning a negligible amount of weight to the Kalman filter predictions. Possibly if we increase the weight for the Kalman filter predictions, this problem would be solved. But that is an extension to the project that we developed in this video and will be looked as a future work to this project. All right. So this is it for this video. If you like the video, please press the like button and subscribe to the channel for more such videos. And thank you for watching. Bye.